The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS licence nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Your clients may want different things from retirement, but share a common need, income. Challenger's innovative lifetime income options are designed for today's retirees. With guaranteed regular income payable for life, regardless of how long your clients live, Challenger's lifetime income options help to manage longevity risks in a way many other investments can't. Help more clients do more, live more, create more. Contact your Challenger BDM or visit challenger.com.au forward slash portfolio dash outcomes. For a retirement portfolio that can deliver more, read and consider the Challenger Lifetime Annuity, Liquid Lifetime, PDS and TMD from challenger.com.au. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I have the pleasure of speaking with Robert Rich, Unite Wealth, uh, on the podcast today. Robert, I see your uh, your face popping up all over the place. And as I said before we press record, I'm like, I've got to get Robert on and have a chat with him. So, so glad you could make it today. Pleasure to Pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, thanks for having me, James. Yeah, happy to uh, join you and spend some time today. Of course. So tell us, Unite Unite Wealth. I was looking at your kind of your LinkedIn profile yesterday, doing a bit of background. Uh, you're a, a year or so into Unite Wealth. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah. Unite Wealth we started uh, start of 23. Uh, yeah. Prior to that, yeah, I was um, with another business where I was a director there. Um, so I've had my AR for eight years now yeah, okay. as a yeah as an advisor. Yep, and how's how's the new business going for you? Yeah, it's going amazing actually. Um, I think it was that uh, just that that internal urge, right, that advisors get when they're when they're working as part of a bigger business, and, and maybe it's not quite you know the right fit or, or the way they envisage the advice process to be and the way they wanted to advise. So yeah, it's been so great to have. My own thing, my own brand, building it from scratch, the website, the logo, the everything, and, and of course, all the systems and processes. It's been a, fa- a really enjoyable experience, and yeah, loving it today. Yeah. The ensemble community is full of people like you that they they have the, they kind of have this itch that they want to scratch, and uh, they go and do their own thing, and and everyone talks really highly of it. How did you find the whole doing the logo and the website and all the rest of it? Some financial advisors I speak to absolutely hate that and it takes far longer than what they thought it was going to take. And then there's others that love getting getting involved in all of that. Where, where did you fit? Yeah, mate. No, I absolutely loved it. Um, I was actually, um, back when I was studying um, my degree, did a business accounting kind of degree and actually picked up a marketing minor. But then I was loving it so much, I turned it into a major. So yeah. just- fascinated by marketing, um, consumer behavior, that whole thing is just completely fascinating to me. And so, you know, my previous, at the previous company I worked for, I was kind of the unofficial head of the marketing department, if you like. And, um, and so that's translated through. So I, I love diving in, building the website, you know, from scratch on, you know, GoDaddy and, and getting it all up and happening. It's a, I just said, you know, build it yourself. Did you build your website yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. Let's look through it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah, mate, it's a <laughs> well. It, it, it doesn't look like a ten thousand dollar website, but it certainly, you know, it does the job, fulfills yeah. the purpose. Of course, of being a shop front um, as an advisor, of course, and you know, families all around Australia just go- need to Google you first, right, to see how how do you stack up. And uh, yeah, so happy with the way it turned out, and um, I actually found myself helping other friends, um, mortgage brokers, other, other people actually build out their websites too. It's a, a nice little, uh, I guess, side hustle. And, and maybe if this whole financial advice career doesn't pan out, then I've got another career waiting for me in website <laughs> design. Did you did you ever work in like marketing proper after you studied or you kind of went no. into financial advice? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, so yeah, I did my study. actually found myself working in payroll and accounting yeah. uh, initially. Um, never, I, I just was applying for a, a, you know, accounting and marketing roles and the accounting one seemed to stick because I was good with a spreadsheet. 
Um, yeah, and then worked my t- way through until, uh, well, by, by chance, happened to be introduced to a financial advisor, had a terrible experience, but that kind of inspired me to be like, hey, you know, I can do this for a living, but instead of delivering terrible experiences, let's deliver a fantastic experience that have people raving about, you know, the uh, I guess going through the process and, and building on their financial literacy. So it's been a, a great journey. And I noticed from from a lot of the content that you put out, Instagram or you know, LinkedIn, where, wherever it might be, you're a big advocate for going out to see your clients. Like you're, you're often, I don't know whether you're out the front of it, <laughs> the, the person's house or the neighbor's house or wherever it is again, I've got my advice and they're, you know, they've got two kids and a mortgage or whatever the, whatever the story is. Um, that's, right. that's a big part of the way that you're operating. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I think um, I, I'm... I, you know, claim to be one of the most hands-on financial advisors in Australia. I love your tagline, like that the hardest working advisor in Australia or whatever it is. Like it <laughs> like it sticks, but it sticks though. It's it kinda of comes back to your marketing mindset, I think. You know, you've got mm. some particular tagline for you and it Yeah. I don't know, it, it sticks with me anyway. So Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah. So it's um no, it, it's been great. And I actually really prefer that driving out to a client's household, of course, you know, before we've had those experiences as advisors when you're sitting at their kitchen table and the clients are just relaxed and they, they put the kettle on and get you a, a cup of Makona or whatever it is, you know, whatever they have as their coffee. And it's just a really, you know, they're, they're just all their barriers are down, right? And you get to the, the real core of, of who, the, who your clients are as people. So, yeah, that, that's my favorite getting out there. And, and also, I guess, as a as a new business, uh, I'm very conscious about, you know, my overheads and keeping them as low as possible. So, you know, have this idea, I think, of having a, a, a beautiful office with, you know, these, you know, expensive boardrooms and fit outs and all those kind of things. I think that's really, you know, falling by the wayside in our industry. Obviously, at the top end of town, that's always going to be the case, Um but but I think, you know, where, where we are and, and most of the younger advisors kind of coming through, it's video calls, it's visiting clients at their houses, it's working from, you know, shared office spaces like Waterman's where I'm dialing in today. Yeah. And it's just, you know, ma- making it work, right? Because in the end, I think the, the clients, they're, they're working with you, the human. You know, yeah, it's not it's not the it's not the flashy brand that you might happen to be working for. It's <laughs> it's you, the person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you're in Melbourne, are you? Yes, mate. Melbourne yeah. based um, in the in the outer east. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and so most of your clients are around there, or at least the ones you're visiting anyway. Yeah, yeah, they have been. So you know, I guess organically they tend to come from you know where I grew up, school friends, you know the the community where where I grew up. Um, but do have about um you know twenty families in Sydney. I look after heaps in Queensland, um Darwin. Actually, interestingly, I found a yeah. little niche up there. Um, there's a there's a crew that are referring me, um, yeah, in Darwin. So yeah, it's um yeah, but, but mostly you know eighty eighty five percent here in Melbourne. Um, yeah, there's a fair few there's a fair few clients in you know a, a year or so in. You've you've done well building it up to that to that level well, already. Yeah, yeah, it's been interesting actually. I suppose going from where I was previously, I had my you know my hundred families that I looked after and everything was all great. Um, but then needed to. Well, pretty pretty much start again um, yeah. where I was in my new brand, which was um, unfortunate. But I suppose I've, I've been. I'm not sure whether it's you know the marketing strategy or the networking strategy or you know the, all the different prongs, I guess that we have to try and generate new business as advisors. But I was always confident in my ability to find new families to work with. I mm-hmm. suppose it's um it's something I've obviously been building on and refining. Over my career, um, you know, yeah, networking strategies, um, you know, and the marketing and so on and so forth and thinking about social media and all those little tentacles that we have, um, th- there's just so many different sources that clients come from. And, you know, at the moment, um, our little practice, what have we got? It's, it's about 18 files on our desk of families that have said, yes, please, we would love a financial plan. And so now we're kind of going, oh, my goodness, right, 18, how do we get those actually through power planning and through our channels to get them delivered? So, yeah, yeah um, it, very fortunate to be we're quite busy at the moment. Um, and it's just uh, it's just a matter of delivering now. Yeah. What Can you talk about the that kind of networking strategy? Like, oh, you know, I'd, I do a bit of the social stuff, but mm. I, I realised early on in my, in my career fronting up to a networking event or something and uh, kind of uh, making small uh, talk uh, with this room full of uh, people. Like, I just can't yeah. deal with that. Me and my personality, that's just not 
me. How, what do you what do you do on that on that front? Of course, yeah. Um, oh, look, and I was terrible at the start as well. Um, but and, and what I'd say is I ha- I despise those uh, speed networking events where you go and you have to make friends and everyone's just dishing out business cards and it's like this is not real. This is not um, how it's going to be. Um, so, so for me, what worked really well was you probably heard of um, BNI, which oh, yes. is yep. Network International. Yeah, so a few people rave about that. But um, I, I was actually in that for five years, so I built my own chapter, my own group. And so from there, that I guess that that got me off the ground. So back when I was first, you know, starting as a as an associate advisor and going right, where's my first, you know, family going to come from? Who am I going to work with? It was actually through getting into like a more of a structured networking program. I know there's a few of them around, BNI Fresh um, and a few others that, that tend to work well for people. But I think it's that it's having that structure, it's having that agenda, it's meeting with a florist and the mortgage broker and the accountants and, and getting comfortable talking about who you know who you serve, how you help them, what are their pain points, what to look out for these kind of things. It helps with public speaking. It helps with a lot of different elements of those soft skills of promoting yourself as an advisor. So I found being a part of that network, I was for five years. I did it actually to the point where then I became too busy and I thought, oh my God, I can't actually take on any new business anymore. So I had yeah. to, I just pulled out of it, right? And everything yeah. was just happened organically from there. But so- um, Are you part of anything and- now in that, on that- networking like organized networking events are you part of anything no, at the moment no no nothing structured i think i've just um developed the relationships over my career with yeah. you know several mortgage brokers several accountants the lawyers and, and so on and so forth and so now everything just um happens organically but I, I do have um an associate who's doing her py at the moment um i just became a provisional advisor actually i should say just completed her exam and so now i'm taking so much joy in in mentoring her and helping her to, I, I see a lot of myself when when I was getting started and I was hopeless in client meetings like we all were and, you know, think just looking for the secret script, but just helping her to organically build up that skill set, get the confidence, and she's going to be another fantastic advisor in the yeah. future. So what, is, what is your business like set up look like from a, you know, people in, in certain positions? What, what's that look like? Yeah, oh, very minimal at the moment, mate. Mm-hmm. So it is, yeah, it is just uh, so myself and my um, my PY and my associate um, yep. Alexis, she's brilliant, um, and then we've got um, one and a half FTE offshore. So yeah, I guess that they they're kind of obviously the back end, and then Alexis and I are the the front end, and um, yeah, and, and that's it, and that's really. And is offshore doing your paraplaning? You mentioned before, like you got these eighteen files, you've got to get through the machine. Like, what, what are you doing? In no, front? not even. Well, it's interesting. Um, we kind of just use an outsourcing paraplaning solution. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're onshore, I should say. Um, actually, it's been interesting. Off uh, a couple of um, friends in the industry of mine, um, at excellent advisors in their own right. They've each gone and started their own business, but they're actually talented paraplaners as well as as young advisors. So. Whilst they're actually building their business and getting up and running, finding their own clients, I've been u- utilizing their services for power planning. Actually, oh, they've been yeah, yeah. In this, but yeah. it's been great. I've been able to give them. Um, well, they've, they've been able to support my business, and I've been able to support them to help them with their cash flow whilst they get up and running. Um, yeah. But I'm sure that's going to fall off at some point. They're going to be so busy, they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, Rob. Um, I much prefer to be seeing clients instead of doing your power planning, which is yeah. fine. <laughs> and then, uh, but then, of course, yeah, I'll just have to find another solution for that. Yeah. How do you, how do you set up your day? Like you, you know, you're, you're doing a bit of the, the social media stuff. No doubt that's bringing work your, your way. No. There's these 18 files that, that you've got to work through. You're out seeing clients. Like, do you, do you have a structure to your day or your week in that you're, Seeing new clients here, you're doing the work here, or is it just all over the shop? Um, yeah, it's it's completely all over the shop. Um, it's uh, or just a case of using um, so like bookings, like you know that version of um, Calendly that Microsoft offers, um, and just having all the different meeting types and, and options in there. So existing clients that want to book in for a fifteen minute chat, initial meetings, strategy meetings, 
plan delivery, review meetings, you, you name it. There's a there's a link for everything. And then so clients will just boom, time in my calendar. So quite often I will not even know what's it, but I couldn't tell you what's in my calendar for next week. I've got no idea, James, to be honest, but <laughs> I will find out on Sunday when I take a look and go, oh, well, look, I've got these three new client meetings or whatever, whatever the case may be. And I just go with the flow, mate. Yeah. My wife has such a hard time with it. She's like, oh, I'll be getting ready in the morning. And she's like, oh, what are you doing today? And I said, I don't know. I said, I know I need to be in the office by nine o'clock. And then whatever my diary says, I need to be somewhere. I'll be there. <laughs> yes, mate. Yeah. Entirely. That's, that's me too. And yeah. uh and yeah, just booking in travel time around when I've got to, you know, leave the office or leave home, whatever the case may be. But but essentially it's four days at home. It yep, in my pajamas pretty much with our moccasins on, just just working from home. Um sat saying with um my associate and then um yeah, and just one day we have a, a communal day where we would work at a waterman's together yeah. and we're in the co working type space where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yep. right. Yeah. Yep. So who are the clients that you're that you're working with? Like you you mentioned before about clear you know, being clear on who you like to serve, who who is it you're working with? Yeah, it's uh, look, uh, my my bread and butter is mums and dads. To be honest, like just you, know, it, it seems strange to have like a I guess a target market, but I don't really kind of drill too too much into right. I want to deal with and need this this that are between forty and forty five years old or whatever the case may be. I, I certainly don't drive into it that deep. I. I get the most pleasure from working with mums and dads that that don't have that basic level of financial literacy. And obviously, that they're just going about their lives. You know, I've got three young kids myself. So, yeah, it's it's working with these mums and dads and having them just kind of shrug their shoulders and like, how does this system work? Like, what is it? How does it actually work? You know, it's just, oh, it just fascinates me to this day that, that, that this isn't being taught at school. That people are just everyone's just running around going, okay, so I've got two hundred thousand in my super, but what the hell does that even? What does that mean? You know, how do I how do I get access? Yeah, all that that just that basic fundamental financial literacy. So I'd say that's where I get my the, my most enjoyment. Um, and we don't really tend to have too many high net worth or ultra high net worth clients or anything like that. That's certainly not our space. Um, yeah, just just the usual kind of pre-retirees and then, yeah, um, fa- young families with children just like yeah. myself, really, young professionals that are, yeah, trying to um, build themselves up and with one eye on their happy ever after. Yeah. So what's the what's the process you take them take them through? Can you can you talk yeah. on that? Oh, certainly, yeah. So it's a, um, it's pretty yeah, similar, I suppose, to most other practices. Um, just a one-hour initial consultation, no fee for that. Um, more than happy to get to understand, you know, their story, plans for the future, so on and so forth. Um, actually, interesting one, James. I actually play a little game with myself in my initial meetings. Maybe some of the other advisors might do the same, but I try my best to have a meeting with clients, but not mention money for as long as possible. Like not not asking your, your assets, your salary, your income, your cash flow, none of it, right? I I play the internal game with myself <laughs> to see how long can I get this meeting going for until I actually need to start talking about their money. And um, I, I think clients really resonate with that because they're well, first they're a bit shocked because I guess they just think coming to an advisor we're just going to be talking about cash all day, every day, and investment returns and blah blah blah, but. Yeah, you know, as you know, with the families that you've worked with, and you probably do your best work with, the very you don't even talk about the the money very rarely. You know, it turns into five percent of the time you're talking about their actual money, and ninety five percent of the time you're talking about the grandkids starting the horse riding lessons or something or whatever it is. You know, so that's that's the best part of my job. So yeah, yeah. So we go through anyway. That <laughs> I'll be way late. That that initial consultation period, of course, at the end of that, there'll be a, a bit of a proposal if they'd like to go through a yeah comprehensive uh, research project. We kind of call it, um, and then once they say yes, um, then we'd look at having a, a strategy meeting next after that. Um, usually another hour or so. Although um, listening to a few other podcasts and things out there trying to get some more inspiration for not just doing things in the same way that we've always done them you know and thinking yeah. about the process and, and refining that and whether or not we need to have a strategy meeting moving forward um to be continued 
Um, so we'll have a strategy meeting next, another hour, then yep, the usual four or five week um, research. And then we'll have that third meeting as a plan presentation meeting um, and then implementation from there. So, yep. Are you using much in the way of kind of technology to help with your data gathering or, or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. So we are using uh, my prosperity yeah, at the okay. moment. So yeah, that's yeah. um that's been working pretty well. Um some clients are really leaning into it and loving um the interface and the app and the you know the software itself. But then of course you have clients that are just they're like, what? What is this? You know, another another piece of technology that I need to get my head around. So there's a constant battle between what's the most efficient way to collect all that information that we need. My goodness, to deliver a, a, an accurate financial plan, but not make the whole process tedious. So, yeah. so yeah, so so things like that. Um, say that my prosperity and collecting the information through there has been pretty helpful. But um, yeah, always just thinking about well, is there What's the easiest way, right? How can how can we extract as much information as we need um, by being as as pain free as possible? Yeah, you know, it's it's a constant challenge, I'm sure. Okay. Um, a lot of people are facing because um, I think, like a, a story anecdotally, I heard from a mortgage broker that we work with. They are absolutely oh, how would I put it mad on. No, if if a client has not completed the full fact find information sheet, we will not be meeting with them, even if they might be the most perfect client in the universe. If they, you know, half an hour before the meeting, if it's not completed, then I'm sending them an email saying, sorry, we're cancelling your meeting and please reschedule and so on and so forth. So I'm like, oh my goodness, wow, you're that hard on, on that process. Um, and you're happy to turn away clients. So we're definitely not there. I'd m- much rather to get things on an ad hoc basis, you know, and kind of go with the flow and work with the client and what works best with them. Yeah. I suppose it's just uh, how, how strict you want to be on your on your process up front and your kind of expectations on the clients and say, well, look, you know, you, you need to be part of this journey as well. I can't do everything for you. And if mm. if you're not going to do this little bit before our initial meeting, well, I can't, I can't help you today. I have to walk have yeah. back in again. The hardest yeah. part I find, you know, I've, I've come across a, a, a couple of clients – in, in the last year or two, that they're earning good money and they're trying to make these decisions around, well, what if we do spend a certain amount of money on a renovation or a new home and what does it mean for longer term? And there's this whole kind of cash flow bit uh, and we don't use my prosperity or anything like that. And so I often find that it stalls in the, well, I need to know where you're spending your money now so that then we can have some conversations around, well, what is the impact of, of these things going forward? And I've built this kind of really elaborate at the end of the day it's a spreadsheet but like you need to plug your numbers into this spreadsheet and and they're all up and about in the meeting and they're all excited for it but you think i've had one of these spreadsheets come back to me and the, and the thing just stalls i'm like yeah i'm not doing a very good job of of this uh this particular type of type of work no doubt there's others yeah. out there that are doing it a f- far better way than i am yeah, it's it, it's a great challenge, isn't it? I know that you know, kind of like people like us. I'm sure if we were dealing with our accounts and doing our tax returns or our mortgage brokers or whatever the case may be, we're like, yeah, you need this information. Bang, bang, bang. Here it is. Two pay slips. But, 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 but no worries. You know, yeah. we just get it, get it done. But um, obviously for mums and dads and people that are plumbers or or whatever, they're just like, oh mate, just this is hard, really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. So you spoke about the the kind of the, the networking element of of new client generation, there's a social media element of the new client generation. Do you want to talk a bit about what you're doing in that space? Yeah, certainly. So look, I I know, oh, far out. I I could be doing so much better at this, right? Like I I, I get complimented quite a bit. People are like, oh my goodness, wow, I see you everywhere and so on and so forth. And that's lovely, right? That I'm visible and actually getting in front of people. But I know, strictly speaking, like if I had a proper marketing department or if I could spend 50 hours a week, you know, honing in on this, I know I'd create different pieces of content for different platforms. I know I'd, you know, go hard on this and go hard on that and be really generating a lot more than what I actually do. Um, currently, it's pretty much just I'm creating one post a week on on TikTok, right? I've, I've finally found TikTok. Um, it's taken me this long to get on top of it. I'm 41 coming up to 42 this year, I'm like, no, I'm biting the bullet. What, what's what been interesting, James, I've, I've actually found the the video creation and the, the like using the interfacing TikTok to be really 
easy and simple and you know really 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 quite quite good to use to create the video and then i'm just reposting the same video across linkedin insta facebook as well so i know it's like shame on me i shouldn't be doing that you know strictly speaking from a marketing philosophy but i'm like it's it's the best i can do right and i'm a director i'm a financial advisor i just need to get something out there because of course you know families do business with people that they know they like and they trust right and so i know i have to get some messaging out there relatively consistently so once a week i'll try and create something um obviously that helps with the visibility and then i just kind of alternate my posts trying to get a real balance between um posts that generate people liking me so i want to be a real human i'm 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 okay if i'm a bit of a dork i'm I'm okay if people see the real me you know what i'm really interested in who i am as a human being because of course that that will help people to trust me and want to work with me more um but but then oh sorry that, that will help them to like me but then on the trust side of course we do need to as advisors be able to demonstrate at times that we actually know what we're doing and we're we're competent and we can deliver excellent outcomes for our clients, right? So it's this interesting balancing act between not just ramming legislation, tax changes, here's some charts, here's some financial jargon, you know, all the time, post, 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 because then of course people are going to go, okay, well, he's obviously very smart, but is he actually a, a nice bloke that I want to work with? So it's trying to find this this real balance there So to, to do that. Um how do you, how do you, I, I always get the question and, and I'll ask you it as well. I always get the question, how do you, how do you come up with the idea for your, your one video a week? Where does the idea come from for you, from your video? Yeah. Your video? Um, oh, it's, um, it's just inspiration from just going about my day really. So I'll, I'll see an article in the paper. I'll see something on LinkedIn. Um, also following, um, you know, other content producers, I suppose. So obviously all the best people in our industry, like yourself, definitely. Um, not, not so I can copy your post, but more just inspiration about, oh yeah, I like the way you've delivered that. I like yeah. your your take on that topic. You know, how can I then repurpose that into something in my own voice? So so from that perspective too. So that's I, I'm just walking around. I've got my I feel like I've got a radar yeah. on 24-7 and everywhere I'm looking, I'm like looking for an opportunity to be like, oh, that's a great idea for a post. Let me make a note of that and then get to it on Tuesdays. But, that, but that's exactly what happens. What, once you start to open your eyes and your ears to it, like there's so many interactions just through your day of being an advisor where you're like, oh, yeah, actually, I could talk about this thing or I could talk about that thing. It's you just got to turn your mind to it. You, it is. Yeah. The, and I, and sorry, just, just to, um, one more level on that is yeah. that what I found is that like videos were very hard for me initially, terrifying, completely terrifying. I hate, I hate the sound of my own voice. Everyone does. I, I hate it. Oh my goodness. I can't believe not your voice. Everyone hates the sound of their own voice. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to this. Po- I won't be able to listen back to this podcast. I'm sure I'll just be like, oh my goodness. I can't believe I actually said what that. Uh, I will be listening to it. Don't worry, Jace. But, um, so there's that. So what what I would say though is for young advisors getting started or people that are kind of like, oh yeah, you know, it's easy for James and Rob to do videos. Look how easy it is, and look how fluent they are, and so on and so forth. I started writing articles, and I started doing photo posts, and I started doing everything, and really have been working up to this. And you know, as I say, you know, any any progress that you make in life, it's it's you know it's just outside of your comfort zone, right? So. Just finding new ways every every week, every month to just step a little bit further outside my comfort zone, a little bit further, a little bit further until now I'm in this point where it's like, yeah, bang, easy for me to to do a video post or talk about my business or whatever the case may be. Yeah. yeah. That's an important point. It's it just, you, you, you don't go from zero to 100. It's a small step, a small step, a small step, a small step, whereas I was exactly the same. I, my my first few posts that I did were, were written, and then all of a sudden it was a photo with some words, and then yeah, then you build up the courage to to put a video and you press post on that first one. It's so nerve wracking. It's like, do I really look like that and sound like that? <laughs> but, uh, it is. Yeah. No, no, it's it's great. And of course, you know, your, your early posts. The only people that are going to like your posts are your wife and your mum, right? And maybe your best mate. Then you'd be like, great. I went to all that effort. I put my heart and soul into that thing and three people liked it and they're already clients or they already love me. So that doesn't really help. But 
again, it builds, it, it creates this persona because, of course, people out there, they're Googling, they're looking at your Google reviews, they're, they're looking you up online and they're like, right, what do I see in this person? Is this someone I want to work with? And so I think it's really important to for every advisor to have their own personal brand, I guess, and to, to be comfortable in who they are, the advice they provide, and to speak from a position of authority because we should all have great confidence in being able to deliver value to our clients. We know we to do it. Um, it's just a matter of you know shouting it from the rooftops, I think. Do you do you enjoy the process of making the post or the video or whatever? Like you, you kind of you've got this bit of a marketing mindset. You know, you built your own website kind of thing. Do, do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy yeah. that too? Bit of a creative outlet for you? Yeah, yeah, I do find that. Um, and I like. Um, I also follow not only other advisors, but I'll follow other content creators and people that will like other marketing gurus, I would say. Maybe I can send you some links after the um, after the show, whether you um, put them out in the show notes. But, um, you know, really, I, I just think it's good to be, you know, absorbing information from lots of different areas and getting inspiration about what, you know, what are hooks, how do they work, you know, what's actually going to be interesting to people, what's going to resonate with 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 people without being an absolute clown and, you know, jumping up and down and dancing on the table. I don't think that's going to help. Um, he delivered me any more clients. So it might go viral and get a hundred thousand views or something. But um, yeah, I think just just keeping it real. But um, yeah, being being really broad and open to new ideas. But I yeah, I love it, mate. It's it's yeah. one of my favorite parts of my week to be like, okay, what can I create today? I see it almost as a bit of a game too. Like for me, I'm like, oh, it's almost like a video game, right? What can I post? And and as you know, your, your first couple of TikToks or whatever, you get two hundred views. And you're like, wow. And then you're like, hang on, no, that's terrible. And then you get one that's a thousand. You're like, oh, okay, wow, this is this is good. I must have done something right. And you continue building. Somehow, I don't know how I jagged one that did seventy thousand views, and I, I don't know what resonated with that one post. Um, but I've, since then, I've been trying to replicate it, trying to find how can I literally do that same thing again. But I can't get anywhere near it. So it's a bit of a fun game for me. You know, fortunately, that is not. Yeah, you know, my whole business doesn't depend on my abilities to make a, an interesting TikTok. Thank goodness. But um, no, I do, I do enjoy it as a creative outlet. Yeah. What's what? What do you think's been the biggest challenge for you in starting the the business? Like, is something maybe is it you weren't expecting it to be quite so difficult, or yeah, is there anything there? Yeah, I, I would say like as a like starting the business from scratch and going right. Not only do I need to be a fully functioning advisor and and find new families to work with and and be a rainmaker as it goes, but um, I, I think from the the business management perspective, obviously that's a whole different skill set, right? Um, as advisors to kind of go, okay, well, I, I'm I'm good at advising clients and getting them through and helping them to be ongoing clients of the firm. That's great, and I can do a review process, and yes, I can tick all my compliance boxes. But how does the company cash flow work. You yeah, know? that's true. And, you know, getting comfortable with that whole process of the, the flow of the money, obviously GST, BAS, um, that, you know, that, that client fee that you thought you were about to receive in May, but it hasn't dropped in time. So then actually that, you know, that, that money you're expecting to lend in that month, it's like, no, it's not here. Okay, it's coming next month. And just just getting comfortable, I think, with the flow of cash and 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 really keeping a a really, you know, how would I say, a close handle on it, I would say. Yeah. So so it's something I definitely am and very conscious of, monitoring, you know, every day as a business owner, making sure and and projecting out, you know, just the same as like what we do for our clients, right? Isn't it yeah. funny how we spend all this time building out cash flow projections, so on and so forth, trying our best to help our clients, but then you're like, I should do this for my business too, obviously, because you know, right? It's it's like it's it seems so obvious, but um, I, I just can't, you know, I just can't have any surprises. You know, I've got my wife at home, my three young boys. You know, it's it's very important that this is a success, and um, yeah, so it's something I take very seriously is making sure that I've got all my ducks in a row and and spend time with the accountants, learning how to pull the right statements out you know, building in projections and so on and so forth out of the accounting software and making sure I've got my finger on the pulse. And then you then you put on an employee and then all of a sudden you have to make a a, a wages payment every fortnight or every month, let alone the 
the SOA fee that you're expecting didn't land, you also have to find the money to pay a wage as well. Of course, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's definitely part of it. Yeah. What about from here? Like, what you know, what what are your plans from here? Do you have any grand plans to take over the world? Do you gonna want to kind of keep it small? What do you what do you what do you think? Oh, James, 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 James. No, 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 <laughs> no. Certainly not taking over the world. I don't have visions of my logo appearing on a skyscraper in Melbourne anytime soon. Um, what I, what I would say is I want to. Part of the a big part of the reason why I started this business is I really want to have a a philanthropic element to the business, right? Uh, pro bono. How can I? How can I get involved? I I feel like as a as a human, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that I have financial literacy. I have a, a healthy family. Everything's you know really. I couldn't have scripted this any better, and feel really fortunate to be in this position at 41. But I know, and from having um, family and friends that you know, say for example, have families with kids with disabilities, that that they're j- just through bad luck. This is you know, this is their story, right? And and it's and it's terribly unfortunate. And so I feel like it's almost my I have to. It's like what pushes me inside is let's basically do everything that I can to support these people. And so uh, a, a little selfish goal for me, James, is an interesting one, is that I'd love to be financially free by 50, call it, and then I just want to just go around doing pro bono financial advice for families with kids with disabilities 24-7, right? Well, wouldn't that be an amazing, you know, when when I'm doing the old um, Richard Branson rocking chair test, right? When I'm 99, looking back at my life going, wow, how did I go? You know, was I a good father, a good husband? You know, did I leave the world in a better place? And I've just got this this mindset of just like, how can I just help as many families around Australia as I possibly can, you know, and, and just go around and just help the people that really need the help? You know, it's not about driving a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or having a palace or whatever the case may be, that's that's definitely not what drives me. It's just about, you know, <laughs> I had this crazy idea. I'm like, imagine if I could get 10,000 people that would want to come to my funeral. Wouldn't that be amazing if I could somehow impact so many, so many families, right, that actually held me in such high regard that I was able to help them, whether they were fee-paying clients or people I just helped pro bono. Um, w- wouldn't that be a wonderful th- thing. So, you know, look, look back on my life. So, yeah, anyway, that, that's what drives me, mate, and that's what gets me out of bed. But I find it's really, really motivating and, yeah, it helps me put in my best work now, knowing that it's going to lead to to that future. Fantastic. That, that's an incredible goal to have. That's that's amazing. Have you looked into the that pro bono advice network that's around? Yeah, it? of course. Yeah, I've made good friends with uh, Nicola Beswick. Yeah. Um, we've, we've rolled out our first um, yeah, pro bono plan through BFAN, which is great. Okay. Um, and and then yeah, there'll be there'll be oh my goodness, so many more to come through through the career and as the business grows out and and finding ways to partner with specifically the so the cerebral palsy support network is a big one and uh, brainwave australia so specifically dealing with kids with cerebral palsy and supporting their family and getting around them um obviously a really really challenging disability so that's that's my one that i that i love and resonate best with so and yeah i find myself doing you know uh, oh gosh um webinars and you know providing contents and just getting involved with those organizations and it, they were very they were very concerned at the start of course as you'd imagine that someone hi i'm a financial advisor and i'm a good guy and i just i'm here to help they're kind of like oh what is this guy for real like what's he up to? he's obviously trying to make a dollar out of this or something and i'm like no 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 like i don't want I don't want money. I'm not here for money. I'm not here to find new clients to work with and pay me fees. That's not why I'm here. It's it's genuinely just to just to help out and support these families that have got that have got enough on their plate, right? Yeah. Well, Rob, thanks for joining me today. That's a incredible message, I think, to to end on. Uh, yeah, great, great, great goal and aspiration. Uh, hopefully, many others kind of listen and 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 end up having a similar kind of aspiration to you. Rob, thanks for for joining me this morning, and uh, hopefully you do listen back to your to your podcast, and uh, <laughs> you can share your own voice for a, for a half hour or so. Okay, thanks so much for having me, James. Appreciate it. Thank you.